my bassoon was taller than me when I started, <laughs> but that wasn't gonna stop me. I loved the look of it. It was this big crazy thing. <laughs> I love the vocal that bends towards the player. We're the lowest woodwind in the standard orchestra, so we end up playing a lot of the bass line. I think that's really fun and beautiful because you get to lay this foundation that everyone builds upon. But then we also get to be a soloist, so we play a lot of lyrical, gorgeous melodies. The bassoon reed is like our mouthpiece to the instrument. It's how we make noise. You can have a gorgeous bassoon, but without a reed, there's really nothing you can do with it. <laughs> and so everyone's reeds are slightly different. They end up being our part of our identity. A traditional reed is made out of pretty much it's cane, it's like bamboo looking stuff. And we start from the tube and break it down and form it and make these mouthpieces that we play. But for that reason, it's like having a vegetable and be part of your instrument. They died. The former dean, who is now the provost, Sharon Wood, plays bassoon. And she was talking with another professor here in the Butler School of Music. And somehow they reached out to Dr. Scott Evans, who's the director of Texas Invention Works. Uh, they wanted a synthetic bassoon reed. So Scott was thinking, OK, this, this seed is planted in his head. So he goes to his student staff, which is me at the time. He's like, oh, you're double majoring in engineering and music. Well, I got just the project for you. He explained to me that would you like to prototype a synthetic bassoon reed? I was like, this is weird, but cool. Don't know anything about bassoon, we'll figure it out. And then eventually we, acc like, we accumulated team members. We all have a background in STEM fields and art and music. And I think that there's a lot of ways that STEM can benefit the arts. The first idea was 3D printing, because that was the most obvious solution. But we quickly learned that that material was not going to behave like the cane that regular reeds use. And that's when we realized that we needed expertise in polymers and plastic. And he was like, well, why don't you remove some of the carbon in the wood and then backfill it with the plastic so you have that same thin piece of reed, but it could be more durable. So that it's all done in a lab setting. And that's what they need me for. <laughs> That was really exciting for us because uh, we found something in chemistry or chemical engineering that we could apply and in in, in something in real world. So right now we do have a prototype. It looked pretty promising. I'm really excited. So we're looking at capturing something called the flexural modulus. These kinds of material properties are great for just measuring um, how something breaks. Kane has a flexural modulus of like 20 gigapascals. Then for our application, we would want some kind of plastic that similarly also has 20 gigapascals of a flexural modulus. The ultimate goal is to create a, a reed that can last one year, but span all the octaves of a traditional cane reed. So it would cut down on costs for bassoon players and hopefully enable younger students to play bassoon that might not be able to afford it otherwise. My dream, dream, dream goal is to go back up to uh, Vice Provost Sharon Wood and be like, hey, three years ago you gave us this project. We have your synthetic bassoon read, or at the very least, a very good prototype. One of the most important parts about music and the music industry is the, the human connection and just the ability to influence people's lives in a positive way. You can pursue music and you can pursue STEM. You shouldn't give up on either of those things. Rather, you can do both. <laughs>